I'm kind of struggling here with what to start. And I guess the best thing to start with is the story that emerged today with both Bellingham and uh, Mukuku possibly linked to Liverpool. I mean, this has nothing to do at all with um, Liverpool really struggling in the Premier League and those two doing quite well for Borussia Dortmund, Klopp's former club. Like, no hint, link here at all. I think, you know, this is, this is I think, where we need to maybe separate the two a little bit. Like, I don't know if Jude Bellingham leaves in the summer. Um, I have no idea what his personal plans are. I know he's under contract for quite some time still. But Kevin Hartshard, who is a friend of the show and has been on the show in the past, um, had this idea that maybe we'll see Musiala and Bellingham sort of do what Haaland and uh, Lewandowski did for a short time in the Bundesliga and sort of be the star leading man, right? And then, of course, he also added the caveat that Dortmund probably sell Bellingham before that can really happen. And I think this is probably something that we just have to accept, that Bellingham mm -hmm. sooner or later will leave the Bundesliga. I think the question here, before we get into Mukuku, because I think that's an interesting separate topic on its own, I think we have to accept that Bellingham will eventually will leave, whether it's this summer or, or later. I don't. Here's the problem I have with him possibly going to Liverpool. I don't think they can afford him. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, that's kind of basically what pops into my head as well. I mean, I mean, it's, it's something we have to talk about in general because it's something that Eden Terzic has basically alluded to himself in his press conference this week when he uh, described Dortmund as a step yeah. for Jude Bellingham, which, you know, is something that you can quite easily kind of overlook until you actually kind of look at it in black and white on paper and you're like, did he just describe his own club as a as a stepping stone uh, for this guy's career? And of course, we all know Jude Bellingham's not going to stay at Dortmund forevermore. You know that's that's kind of fine, but it's mm -hmm. just kind of weird when the head coaches talk about it. And 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 you know, yeah. Terzic himself is like a you know self proclaimed Dortmund fanatic, so it's weird that he's even kind of bought mm -hmm. into this idea that these guys are just here to kind of you know do some classes, learn some courses and then move on and become and graduate from the Dortmund Academy, shall we say, uh, and then go play for a proper yeah. club. So it's it's I've I've that kind of that made me feel a bit uncomfortable as a Bundesliga fan, to be perfectly honest with you. Um but you know the reality is obviously Bellingham is going to move on. Um I must agree with you mm. to be honest with you. I, I I kind of feel like the whole the Liverpool thing seems like low hanging fruit by the media in my opinion. In the sense that, yeah. you know, I think they just kind of look at Jurgen Klopp, Borussia Dortmund, la 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 la, he's going to have to go there. And how many times did we see this with Erling Haaland when it was constantly linked to saying, oh, well, you know, Klopp's got a special relationship with Dortmund and Dortmund have a special relationship with Liverpool and, and Haaland would love to play for Jurgen Klopp mm. and blah, 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 blah. And it's just kind of like, well, actually, no, at the end of the day, they're going to go to whichever club pays the most money for them and you know, whoever can afford them at the end of the day. And even though Liverpool kind of have this kind of transfer strategy of spending huge amounts of money on specific players each summer, you know, I'm talking like Alisson, for example, Van Dijk, uh, and obviously David Nunes mm. this season. Um, uh, there was obviously, who was his face in the January signing? The uh, Brazilian, who's, I've already forgot his name now. Um, Artur. Uh, sorry? Artur. Yeah, it was Artur. So, it's just kind of like it, they, they they do kind of have this kind of you know transfer policy. So perhaps they could sit down and say, right, we need to kind of break the bank to bring a new centre midfielder in uh, in the summer. So let's go for that. But mm. as things are kind of looking right now, you have to kind of wonder whether Jude Bellingham would want to move move there because it's not. I mean, obviously the Premier mm. League is obviously always very difficult, uh, and teams kind of fall in and out of the top four all the time, but. At Liverpool, there's this kind of specific issue where, you know, there's this kind of talk about whether this team's coming to the end of a cycle, whether the club itself is coming to the end of a cycle under Jurgen Klopp, which is obviously something that Bundesliga fans would be well aware of. And even if Liverpool could afford him, and even if, you know, Jurgen Klopp was able to kind of charm Bellingham into the idea of coming to Dortmund, uh, sorry, coming to Liverpool, you have to kind of wonder whether that would be enough if Liverpool, for example, were to finish like seventh or eighth this season, and 
there was no real clear sign that you know the squad mm-hmm. was turning a corner under Klopp or whether the club had the money to fix things because you know Jude Bellingham could quite happily sit there and say, well, not quite happily, quite rightly sit there and say, well, I've just been carrying Dortmund for two years. Why would I want to move to Anfield and carry Liverpool for two or three years while you're trying to rebuild things? So I think I, 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 by no means would I say it's impossible and by no means would I say it's a, it'd be a terrible move for Bellingham because I think Liverpool a fantastic club. Jurgen Klopp's a great manager, obviously. Uh, and they basically on the verge of yeah. creating history last season. But um, it's there's a lot of things kind of pushing back on it, in my opinion, right now. Yeah, I, I think, and I actually looked up uh, Bellingham's contract. Uh, it runs until 2025. No exit clause. <sighs> Dortmund have have no need whatsoever to sell him next summer, hmm. right? I mean, like really, they're not under pressure until the summer after to do it. So I think this this is going to probably play out very similar to how it did with Jaden Sancho, where there's going to be probably a ton of talk about a transfer next summer. It's going to lead all the way. There's going to be deadlines set and all that nonsense. Um, everything to really make it impossible for Dortmund to actually set up properly for a Bundesliga season because <laughs> that's <laughs> how, it, how it goes often for them. Um, and then ultimately he's not going to move because there's no no reason for him to move um, in, in that summer and there's no reason for Dortmund to sell only for them to sell then the year after. So 2024, right? Which mm. is also a European Championship year. Um, a European Championship, by the way, that's in Germany. So I, I look at this and say, why would Dortmund sell next summer if they can probably still command a hundred million plus the summer after, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I, I am I'm looking at Man City here. I'm looking at that point. Newcastle might be a top four team in England, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Real Madrid is always thereabouts, and Real Madrid, and we talked about this last week, is one of only two clubs in in European football that ran a profit through the pandemic. The other one happens to be Bayern Munich. Mm. Um, I don't think Bayern Munich are in this conversation because it's probably too expensive for them. Um, but you cannot count them out entirely either, right? So, but I think the big year will be twenty twenty four, um, just based on the contract. And contract is is a good transition to the next guy, Yusufu Mukuku, right? Who's I don't know where that link is coming from. I don't think Yusufu Mukuku is by any stretch of the imagination ready to go to Liverpool and solve Jurgen Klopp's problems there. <laughs> if anything, I think it's probably the worst step in his career at this stage to go there. He's just becoming established at Borussia Dortmund. Um, there's a story that was run by Bild, um this week, um, which kind of explains why people have suggested to me that watch his birthday when he turns 18 in November, right? Mm. Um, because there's apparently quite a lot of issues with the family trying to control the contract he's going to sign next. And once he turns 18, he has full control over the amount of money, where it goes, how he can spend it, um, and the structure of the contract he can ultimately sign, which the control he doesn't have right now has to go through his family, which Mm. is why there's been so much delay. And, um, And this is... I, I think why you know so many people in Dortmund said to me, watch for watch out for his birthday. Something will happen on his birthday, right? That's because when he's mm. eighteen, he actually can he has full control over the money that he will receive. And with the family situation being the way it is, I can see why he's saying like I'm not signing anything until I can actually make that decision myself. I mean, fair enough, right? Mm. Um, but he's been in an excellent form as well, and um. You know, I can see why some media will jump on this and say, oh, yeah, he would be a great solution to bring in. And, you know, this he's the 17-year-old wonderkind. Um, while totally forgetting the fact that the 17-year-old wonderkind essentially has just spent this entire last year and this year to actually get to the position where he's at and, like, ripping him out, out of the situation that he's at with the support network that he has in Dortmund. And I've I seen him at the... Uh, post game media press uh, mixed zone right where I don't want to call her a minder but you know a press woman that works with him directly there is there is he's protected there and mm. I don't know if he is ready to really trade that in for an environment that can be extremely hostile uh, and that is the Premier League right um, yeah. so I don't know I can't see this one either it's 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 such an odd suggestion because 
I mean, people who listen to his podcast or who now watch his podcast will know that even like, what, two months ago, we were talking about whether he was even ready to be the step up at Dortmund, you know, and he did kind of have a string of games where he looked like he really had to kind of work on his fitness. He had to work on his kind of physical aspects of his game. And we were really questioning whether he could kind of step into that number nine role. I think he's kind of done really, really well to kind of work on that. He's worked really well to uh, really kind of shoehorn himself into Terzic's side to the extent that, I mean, he's maybe had a bit of fortune in that regard. Maybe fortune's not the right word because of, you know, the circumstances. But obviously, Sebastian Haller's had to step out yeah. of the game and Anthony Modesta hasn't really worked out either. So Terzic was more or less forced mm. to play him. Uh, and it seemed like he was reluctant to, to yeah. be perfectly honest with you, because he did stick with Modesta for perhaps too long. Um, and I actually think Makuku has probably been one of the few bright sparks in that team. Um, there's a lot of players in that team who I think really inconsistent, really kind of fair weather players, as we maybe say, you know, um, and can often let Terzic in the side down. But he, alongside maybe Jude Bellingham, have really stepped up and... Mm. It's it's it, it's great to see, but it's 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 still far too early to really decide. Right, this guy's the next Erling Haaland, or he's the next Jadon Sancho, or Christian Pulisic, or whatever else. Um, he's just at this moment. At this moment, he's just a gifted young player who's on a good run of form. And I think we're going to have to give it two or three years of consistent performances before we start kind of putting him in the same kind of bracket as. Uh, you know, these guys who've gone for tens and tens and tens of not almost six figures uh, from Dortmund in the past. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It'd be really interesting yeah. to see what happens on that birthday when that new contract comes out and what kind of contract it is because mm. he's been very vocal or his camp have been very vocal kind of from the get-go long before he became this kind of first-team fixture. I mean, last season, there are all sorts of reports in Germany about how uh, him and his father were furious that he wasn't getting game time. He was pushing really hard uh, to get a loan deal, I think, if I'm not mistaken, mm. last January, or maybe, maybe even up to this summer, uh, because he wasn't getting a look in. So they mm. don't really have any, well, they probably do have a degree of loyalty, obviously, but they don't have any kind of qualms about saying, look, if you're not going to, if you're not the best place for, our, for us, we'll move on to our club. And It'd be interesting enough after the stretch of games and after he's getting his name linked with these sort of clubs, if when the when him mm-hmm. and the club now sit down to this, discuss this new contract, he says, right, well, I want a few clauses and extra extra clauses in here in case you know I do have a good couple of seasons, and Real Madrid do come calling. Yeah, um, I, I I'm hearing three times three point five million is on the table for him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a decent amount of money for an 18 year old. I, I guess his argument is that Modesta is earning six million a year, <laughs> which is, <laughs> in retrospect, probably turning out to be one of the worst six million plus whatever the fee was. I think it was the fee was five to six million as well. So mm-hmm. that's 12 million, very poorly spent in retrospect. Maybe it's just, maybe it still turns around. Who knows? But Mukuku is definitely an interesting one. And yeah, I, I think the, there's a few factors here. The way that he's played, um, the fact that he is in, in the World Cup conversation now, uh, thanks to the position that he plays and his performance in recently, including the goal he scored against Stuttgart in Dortmund's 5-0 win, rebound win, um, typical Dortmund fashion, right? Hot and cold. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, Mukuku to Liverpool is um, premature. 